all rivers have a voice. Whether it's soft and whispering, like sweet violin. And then all of a sudden, this electric bass solo can come in, raging and flooded. But all along the same river, you can have all of this live together. And the next day it can change. A river that holds an incredibly special place in my heart is the Trinity River. I grew up by the Trinity Lake. Right down from my house there is a little creek and I was free to roam there and I could just sit on a rock and be entertained the whole day. I found it so grounding. Not only could I listen to it, it was listening to me. And Daddy, won't you take me back to Newlinburg County, down by the Green River, where paradise lay. Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late in asking. Mr. Peabody's coal train has hauled it away. My name's Steve Evans. I'm the Wild Rivers Director for Cal Wild, and I've been working on river conservation since 1974, I think. I guess I've gained the reputation as the river guy in the state. If you have a question about rivers in general, or wild and scenic rivers in particular, call Steve Evans. <laughs> People go, oh, you save rivers, you must get out in the rivers a lot. Well, unless I make a real conservative effort, I don't, because the work can be overwhelming. But mostly spend a lot of time on the phone in front of the computer and in meetings. But what it boils down to is like three basic goals. One, to encourage federal agencies to determine if rivers are eligible for protection. The next step is legislative work with Congress. And the third one is defense. The biggest threat to the Trinity, hands down, is climate change. A lot of folks will be super conscious of the drought and then you'll get a big storm and they'll be like, okay, I don't have to worry about it anymore. And it's not actually the case. We shouldn't go through these extreme droughts to then extreme storms. Up here in Humboldt, because of these extreme weather patterns, we actually get landslides, a larger amount of erosion and sediment into the rivers that can harm the fish and harm all of those ecosystems. We've built thousands and thousands of dams on rivers and streams throughout the United States. California alone has 1,400 dams. And dams affect rivers in many ways. They divert water, they modify flows, they flood important habitat. Virtually every run of salmon and steelhead in California is threatened and endangered because all those dams block their access to their spawning grounds. And also, when we take so much water out of the river, you reduce flows and you reduce the habitat that is at optimum temperatures. Salmon need cold water to survive. When you have five years of drought, the big fight is over every drop of water between consumptive water users like agriculture and people who want to see enough water left in the rivers to maintain the environment. We're in this situation where agribusiness in California says, give us more water, we deserve all the water. And you know, that's important, food's important, farming's important, but why should we harm our rivers to do that? The National Wild and Scenic Rivers Act is the nation's foremost river conservation law. It was developed and passed in Congress because some folks realized that we were building so many dams on so many rivers nationwide 
the idea of a free-flowing river was becoming very rare. This climate crisis is every bit as bad as many believe and talk about. One can feel a sense of despair. I mean, it, it really is that daunting and that bad. But I don't want everyone to just curl up in the fetal position and give up. We gotta keep fighting, we gotta do everything that we can. Trinity River is a very important tributary of the Klamath. It's a stronghold for spring Chinook salmon and summer steelhead, which aren't found hardly anywhere except in Northwest California. We have well over 400 miles of salmon and steelhead streams proposed for wild and scenic status in Jared Huffman's district. I've got tribes and communities up there that depend on that water. Northwest California Wilderness Recreation and Working Forests Act is super important because it'll bring cleaner, colder water. It'll open up hundreds of miles of habitat. And if you add that together with a healthier Trinity River, the whole basin begins to come back to life. There are 194,000 miles of rivers and streams in California. We've protected about 2,400 miles, and we're trying to get that number up to 6,000 but it's going to require legislation. You have to think long term on this stuff. To deem something wild and scenic is great and it's beautiful, but we need to say, now that we did that, what now? It's going to take a United States Senate that is willing to do a big public lands package. And sometimes that happens in unusual ways. We will pass them as part of a defense bill. We will pass them as part of some year-end spending bill. If it's a ham sandwich, I will attach this bill to it. But one of these days, we'll get it past the Senate and onto the President's desk. California, I hope, will always be a place where we value our rivers and wildlife and salmon. I hope we're always part of that. But it's not just going to happen. It's going to take a lot of advocacy, it's going to take some vision, because one thing that we have learned in California is that the appetite for water diversion in this state is endless. I think that some of the most accessible ways that people can help the Trinity right now is becoming more knowledgeable about what's happening. Learn what's happened over the last few decades and learn who's going to make the future decisions. Use your voice. My sweet mom, she is my heart. She is the reason I'm doing what I'm doing now. She just like worked so hard and gave everything that she had to me and my sisters in such an elegant way. What I do remember is she was just this incredible fisherwoman. That was the way that we connected. My sisters never wanted to go out, but I would just get so excited to go with mom in the fishing boat, and she would just reel in these big fish. In these last few years, yeah, she got sick. When I came here to caregive for her, we went a whole year without her ever leaving the apartment. Now that she's surpassed what was expected of her future, she is now this thriving artist who has discovered her second life. And I have a minivan, and so I could fit everything she needed, an oxygen tank, a wheelchair, and go see the redwoods from the van. We both agree that that was a healing journey. I used to think reconnecting with nature was these longer expeditions. In the last two years, when I moved up here to Caregive, I couldn't leave the house at first for more than 15 minutes. It really opened my eyes that that is the reality for a lot of people. Not everyone has access to a car. Not everyone has access to a boat or even the knowledge of where your closest river is. We've created these barriers to it. 
It's not a simple solution to say, well, just go reconnect with nature. We have to recreate those pathways. Rafting is so fun. It's just this way to play with the river. In a river, I am alive and aware and playful, twirling around. It's kind of a dance. On a river, I'm at home.